Hello. In this section, we will introduce how to construct the control chart for attributes. So for the attributes, they are different from the measures because for the examples of measures, we see measure included the characteristics like size, weight, volume, etc., etc. Usually, this kind of measure, the result will be what we call the continuous variable. But for the attribute, usually it is the result from a counting process, which means usually the output is a discrete variable. But for the attributes, actually we have two charts to use. One is a p-chart, the other one is called a c-chart. Now, p-chart will be used when observations can be placed into two categories, either good or bad, pass or fail, operate or do not operate. And when we do the calculation for the p-chart, p-chart basically is based on the percentage of failings or percentage of defects that we observed in our sample. So here p, basically we can think it stand for percent. On the other side, C chart should be used only when the number of occurrence per unit of measure can be counted. So C chart the C can be considered to stand for counting. So when the result is from a counting process, we use C chart. Now we list a few examples here. So scratch, chips, dent, or errors per item, bricks or tears per unit of error. Now compare the C chart attributes with the P chart attributes. We can see there is a big difference for the C chart is C chart, we see the result or the counting result actually is number of occurrence per unit of measures. So for the C chart, if we need the output, there will be a unit of measure to consider. Otherwise, well, it won't be a C chart problem. Now the formula for P chart, we can see it's mainly based on the P bar, which will be the average percentage. It will be total number of defective divided by total number of observations. And the rest are just a straightforward result from our statistics. If you remember in the statistics, when we talk about the sampling distribution of proportion, this will be the part that is used in the construction of p-chart control limit. Only one thing I want to remind you is the n, which is the sample size. So basically, that is the number of samples we collect every time. It is not the total number of observations. Well, we will show it in a minute in the through example. For the C chart, C chart is based on Poisson distribution. The only number matters is C, which is the average defects per unit. Now here I want to remind you is, well, C is the average defects per unit. So although the output of the counting process usually is integer. However, when we look at the C, because it is an average value, so this average value actually can be a real number instead of integer number. So for example, if we have two samples, and the first sample gave us five defects, and the second sample gave us four defects, and when we calculate the average, it will be the average of this 4 and 5, which gave us C equals to 4.5. So this is an example to see the difference between the average defects and the counting process from each sample. Now let's take a look at an example and see how to identify which chart should be used. And after the identification, how to follow the formula to construct the control limit for both of these two control charts. Now, the first part, 
ask us, the inspector found an average of 3.9 scratches in the exterior paint of each of the automobile being prepared for shipping shipment to dealers. Now here we can see we have the first to identify its average. So remember, go back to what we have here. Which part use an average? So P chart is not. It is a percentage of the defect per each sample. And C chart is actually the one that has the average used. So we have an average of 3.9 scratches. And more important is that this 3.9 average comes from each of the automobiles. So here the automobile, each automobile serves as a unit of measures. So when we have the unit of measure, we have the average counting result, we know this will be the C chart problem. And uh, the given number tells us the C chart has an average value C equals 3.9. So we can substitute everything into the formula. This example asks us to calculate two sigma control limit. So z equals to two. Now we do the calculation and find the upper control limit equals to 7.85 and the lower control limit equals to negative 0, 0, 0 0.05. Now, this number cannot be used as lower control limit because we know for any counting result, the output can never be negative. So for the control limit itself, cannot be negative either. So when we see any negative value, we automatically set the lower control limit as zero. Now part B said before shipping lawnmower, to dealers, an inspector attempted, attempts to start each mower and uh, notes any that do not start on the first try. The lot size is 100 mowers and an average of 4 did not start, which is 4%. Now we see the first, it mentioned about, it tried to identify any one that do not start on the first try. If you remember when we talk about a p-chart, when we use p-chart, we know that the output can be classified into one of the two categories. Well, here it is clear anyone that do not start on the first try and anyone do start on the first try are the two categories we use to classify all the samples. And also it mentioned, well, we have a lot size of 100 and average of four. Now remember for C chart, usually we have a unit of measure. It will be a one car or certain time period or certain area, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And here we have a sample size. Now both of these two information, two pieces of information point us to the P chart. And for the P chart, we need to know the P bar, which is the average percentage of defect, and it is given as 4% in this question. So we have P bar equals to 0 0.04, and we calculate the standard deviation of this sample defect rate equals to 0 0.0196. And uh, we can calculate the corresponding upper control limit and lower control limit as shown here. One thing I want to point out is 100. It mentioned that the lot size is 100 mower. So N, as we talked earlier, N is the sample size for each sample, which is how many samples do we have in each subgroup. It is not the total sample numbers that we need to keep in mind. For example, if we have three, if we have three samples, and for each sample we have, say, 20 samples. Now, 
When we do the calculation of the p-chart, n should equal should equal to 20 instead of 3 times 20, which is 60, because this n is the sample size for each lot. And for us, we have three samples. Each sample basically include 20 values, which should be the number of n here. 